Okay, so we're doing example 10 in our functions and graph topic. I had a, a video of an introduction to asymptotes. So if you haven't watched that, I would suggest you go back and do that first of all. But I'll try and summarize it very quickly. We're going to look first of all at vertical asymptotes, and then we're going to look at non vertical asymptotes. Okay, so vertical asymptotes, we're going to do an example uh, 10 um, and example 11. Okay, so a vertical asymptote uh, is a, for a rational function. A rational function is a function which has a polynomial term on the numerator and the denominator. Then there are going to be vertical asymptotes at times. And if you watched the previous video, you would have seen some of these uh, graphs that I did on Desmos. So here's an example of a function. If you look in the top left hand corner, we've got y equals m times x minus a all over x minus b. And the reason why there's an asymptote, a, a vertical asymptote, this is the, the, the vertical dotted line, it means that for that particular value of x, there is no corresponding value for y. We cannot find a coordinate point that lies on that line. And the reason for that, of course, is that on the denominator, we have the value x minus b. Now, in this case, b is, has a value 2 at the moment. So it stands to reason that when x is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. And therefore, we cannot calculate a matching y coordinate to go with 2 because the denominator is 0. And as you can see on the left, if I, as a slide b, as I change the value of b, then of course it changes the position of the vertical asymptote because that's the crucial point of it. So in order to find a vertical asymptote, we need to study the denominator of the rational function. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the notes here. For any rational function, uh, gx over uh, h of x, where we're dealing with polynomial functions, the vertical asymptotes will appear when h of a equals 0. In other words, when the denominator is equal to 0, we need to solve a polynomial equation. Okay, uh, That's hopefully quite straightforward. We want to think also about the nature of the asymptote. In other words, is the curve uh, going to positive infinity towards it or down to negative infinity. Let's just go back to uh, the curve here. So you'll see on this vertical asymptote at the moment, just to the left of, so let's make it, uh, say b is 6 exactly, right? So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 6. And just to the left of it, when x is 5.9, say you'll notice that the y coordinate is very large. And as it gets tends towards 6, 5.999, the value of y will be almost infinitely high. Okay, but never, uh, it, you know, it will just disappear off the top of our screen. Similarly, just to the right of the asymptote, you know, it comes from negative infinity. Now, depending on the function, so for instance, I could change a few things. Uh, of course, uh, by changing uh, the multiplier on the top to negative, all of a sudden the graph gets kind of flipped around. And here, the nature of this asymptote is different. To the left, it tends towards negative infinity. And to the right, it tends towards positive infinity. And there are some functions where they tend both to positive infinity or both tend to negative. It just depends on... Uh, the other aspects of the function. So the nature of it's important. And so we have to do a little check of that as we go along too. Okay. So uh, this is what we're going to do. Example 10, investigate the vert vertical asymptotes of the function f of x equals x minus 2 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay. So uh, what we can say here is that uh, the vertical asymptotes will occur asymptote occur when well what are we looking for? We're particularly looking for the denominator to be equal to zero when x squared plus two x minus three equals zero. And we can solve that uh, Ideally, by factorising, if you can, it will, in certainly in our sphere, they should be quite easily factorised. So we've got x and x, factors of negative 3 that add to positive 2, 
would be positive 3 and negative 1. And so we can say that uh, either x equals negative 3 or x equals positive 1. So we've actually got two. Remember that these are solutions of the equation. So what we need to do is to just clarify that these aren't coordinate points. Okay. In the past, you might have seen x equals negative 3 and x equals 1 might have been the, the point where a curve intersects the x-axis, for instance. But we've, we've got to remember that for us, these are actually the equations of vertical lines. So it's, it's good to actually remind yourself of that by finishing it off by saying, vertical asymptotes are the lines x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. Remember that they're equations of straight lines and not just points. Okay. So we want to think about uh, the nature of them. So we'll, let's take the, the positive one first, okay? So we want to investigate the nature of the asymptote x equals 1, okay? Oops, that's not very good. The nature of the asymptote x equals 1. I'll put a wee nature of x equals 1. So what we're really saying here, and what I tend to do, and uh, is to draw a dotted line. At the moment my dotted lines have got an arrow on them. Uh, I'll get rid of that. Uh, here we go. Okay, so what we want to do, um, that was not good, is to imagine that's our asymptote and we can say, let's write down x equals 1. Okay, imagine that's uh, on the graph. And what we want to do is to imagine, does the, the does the curve go up like that or does it go down like that on the left-hand side? On the right-hand side, does it come from positive infinity? Does it come from negative infinity? We're not sure about which of these uh, directions it comes from. So we want to sort that out. Okay. So what we would do is to consider a value just to the left of x equals 1 and just to the right, as we've been doing with... You know, nature tables. You want to think what's happening just to the left and just to the right. So let's remind ourselves of the function. Uh, the function that we're dealing with is f of x is equal to x minus 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in factorised form. x minus 2 all over x plus 3 and x minus 1. It's much easier to consider in this form here. Okay, so what we're going to look at is to think what happens as the x value tends towards a number just below 1. So rather than thinking of, well, let's take 0 or negative 1 as we do for nature tables, I just want to write it as 1 with a wee minus superscript. That just means infinitesimally close to 1. Well, what happens there? What happens to the y coordinate? Well, we're going to think about the fraction. Look at the top, x minus 2. For a number just under 1, like 0 0.9, 0 0.9 minus 2 would be a negative value. That's all we're looking for, again, just like all kind of nature investigations. That's going to be a negative value. And we've got, we're have got we going to have two numbers in these two brackets here. As x is just less than 1, then x plus 3 will, all, of course, will just be uh, positive, it'll never be negative, so that'll be positive. But this is the crucial one for us. If x is just less than 1, like 0.9, okay, uh, then we can see here that we've got uh, 0.9. Well, that's going to be 0.9 minus 1 is going to be negative, okay? Obviously, if it was just over 1, it would be positive, and that's what we're going to have a look at in a moment. So we can see here that if we've got a number here, there's a negative number on top and on the bottom there's going to be an overall negative. So that's going to be the same as effectively that, which is going to mean overall it's going to be positive. Now what does that mean? It means that the y coordinate is positive when it is almost at the asymptote line. Now that effectively means that we're talking about it's going to be heading towards positive infinity. 
I'll move that over a little bit. So in other words, as x is just below 1, we're saying that the y coordinate is going to become more and more positive. And what that means is that just before the line, the value of y is going to increase and increase and increase, and that's going to look like that at the top. Okay. What's going to happen as x is moving to the right of the asymptote, in other words, just a fractionally over 1? Well, we can consider the same idea of thinking what's going to happen. And you notice that as we constructed this first uh, kind of sine fraction, we identified the fact that the crucial one is going to be this right-hand one on the bottom. So for a value just over 1, the, the numerator is still going to be negative x plus 3 is still going to be positive, uh, but the one that's going to change is this one here, x minus 1. So for a number like 1.1, all of a sudden this is going to be positive, which means that we've got a negative divided by a positive number. So overall, our value of y is going to tend to head towards a negative value, and because of the magnitudes we're dealing with, it's going to end up tending towards negative infinity just after the asymptote. Now that's just down here, so we're thinking of it's going to end up coming up like that. So if our analysis comes up with a positive number, it's going to be at the top of the asymptote towards positive infinity, and if it's negative, it's going to have a tendency to be down at the bottom towards negative infinity. Okay, so let's try the second one. Uh, well, the second asymptote is the line x equals negative 3. So I'm going to repeat that for the uh, second asymptote. Okay, so if you want to pause the video perhaps and try and do it yourself, and then you can restart it and see if you agree with me. We're going to have a look at the nature of the asymptote a, a, x equals uh, negative 3. Um, I'm going to try and draw a line that's not got to, I'll have to change that. Uh, but we'll get rid of it for just now. I don't like an arrow there. Okay. So we're dealing with the, the same function. So in actual fact, we're, we've got a lot of similarity here. But I'm just going to rewrite this. So f of x is x minus 2 over x plus 3. I never like to look too far back into my work. I always like to kind of update things. So what we're thinking of what happens when x is just to the left of the line. x equals negative 3. So this is our asymptote x equals negative 3. We want to investigate the nature of it. So what happens the y coordinate is going to be, well, Look at the top, x minus 2. So we're dealing with values around about negative 3. So I'm talking about like negative 3.1 would be just to the left of it. So obviously that top number is still going to be negative. And if you look at the bottom numbers, x plus 3, this time that's going to be our, our crucial one here. Because that's going to change depending on uh, the left being a left or right. So if you're doing negative 3.1, plus 3, that's still a negative value, just under 0. Okay, So we've got a negative here, and just under negative 3, take away another 1, it's still going to be negative. So the overall effect is we've got a negative on the numerator, a negative times a negative is positive. So it means that overall my y number is going to head to negative infinity. What does that mean on the, on the asymptote? It means that to the left of my asymptote, it's going to come to the bottom. There's a negative infinity. So my nature is that the curve is going to look like that. That's way too straight a line. It's going to go like that. Okay. I don't know where it's going to go. Uh, and that's the purpose of this is not to sketch the whole graph, but just to remind myself uh, which direction it's heading, to the bottom or to the top on each side. Okay, and finally, what about the uh, other side of it to the right-hand side? We can say as x tends to negative 3 positive, so just to the right of negative 3, like negative 2.9. Well, what will happen? Top uh, 
the numerator is still going to be negative. On the bottom, this is the, the, the crucial one here because now we've got, say, negative 2.9. Add 3 to that, you're going to get a positive just over 0, positive value. The second uh, factor here is still going to be negative. But this time, the y coordinate is going to be a negative divided by a negative, which gives us a positive, which tells us that the y coordinate is going to head up towards positive infinity on the right hand side. So it's going to appear to go like that. There's positive values up at the top. Okay. So what I've learned really is that I've got two uh, asymptotes. Um, Yeah. I've got two asymptotes, one of which, and this is where uh, we'll, in the end we'll start sketching a graph, but it, we've basically got two asymptotes, x equals negative 3 and x equals 1, and we've learnt from the first one, way, way back up here, look at this here, we've learnt that the x equals 1 asymptote goes above well, it's positive to the left, negative to the right, okay? In other words, it will go like that. And we've got this other one here that's going to go in the, the other way like that. And you notice that that actually fits in with the, the matchup because we would expect if it goes down, if there's two asymptotes for it to then loop back up and join in. So roughly... Um, at some point it's going to look that's terrible I'm ashamed of that effectively we're saying it's going to come down it's going to come back up and these ones are probably going to kind of tail off there there'll be an, another asymptote either horizontal or oblique but we can then fill in the blanks once we've learnt a bit more about it but for the now all we're looking for is the nature something like that. We're looking for the equation of the asymptote and also a little idea as to whether it's heading towards positive or negative infinity. Okay, so hopefully that's been helpful. Uh, example 11 has got another one we'll have a look at and then you can practice a few yourself.